Excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you to the organisers. It's a delight to be here at OSC here in Montreal. Um, the title of my talk is Trust and Transparency in Reporting Machine Learning, the Dome Giga Science Press Trial. Ah, first technical error. Sorry. Okay, so just just briefly, but uh, a land acknowledgement um, to the to the original people, the first people in Montreal, just that we recognise and respect the Canadian Kehaka peoples as the traditional custodians of the land and waters in which we meet today. So the problem, in brief, um, in recent times we've seen an immense growth in machine learning publications. This, this slide, very thank you from Alex Monzon, who's um, part of the Dome Consortium, which is part of this, this, this trial that we're talking about here today, has provided this slide, uh, which sort of highlights the kind of issue. Now, we, we see this, we're coming at it from the perspective of, of a publisher. The scope of our journal, like Giga Science Press, we have, we have two journals, um, Giga Science and Gigabyte, and they're big data manuscripts okay so they could be on genomics could be on transcriptomics could be on digital pathology or neuroscience and increasingly we're seeing a machine learning component in them and what we need is we need some reporting method that allows reviewers to be able to to handle um this this concept so machine learning is increasingly applied to omics data there's a need for sufficient detail to enable a researcher or a reviewer to understand the machine learning approach used in a research study. The, the problem, simply put, if you look in the manuscript, the manuscript gives you a sort of high level overview of maybe a machine learning study, and um, for example, neuroscience. Then you're maybe confronted with the code. It could be a GitHub repository, and you have to look line by line at the code to try and pull out the sort of details of, of what did they actually do here? What did the researchers do? So we need something intermediate that gives us necessary details so reviewers can swiftly work out, is, is this approach plausible? Is it a good approach? To, so to incentivize the generation of sufficiently detail, detailed annotation, um, our organization, Gig Science Press, has partnered with the DOME Consortium with the goal of encouraging authors to follow the DOME recommendations. So what is DOME? So DOME is an acronym for Data Optimization Model and Valuation. Um, DOME's a, an Alexia-funded framework. Um, Alexia is the European Infrastructure for Life Science Data, and the DOME recommendations are one output from the Alexia Machine Learning Focus Group. Uh, the DOME recommendations are for supervised machine learning validation in biology, and the idea is to produce an actionable outcome usable by the wider community, and we're talking researchers, publishers, funders, and policy makers. So, in a little bit more detail, the DOME recommendations are defined as the minimal requirements asked as questions to machine learning Im implementers in order to ensure reliability and reproducibility of the reported methods. In the title of this talk, I, I refer to trust and transparency rather than reproducibility, and that's because we have confronted certain times where de facto re reproducibility is going to be a problem um, if, if you were to think of some um, Google brain type sort of analysis. We, we can't ask reviewers to go away and to do this themselves, but in, in such frameworks, we, we still want trust and transparency. We want, we want to be able to know more about um, the methodology that you applied. So data, what do we want to know for the data? We want to know about the provenance, you know, if it's in protein data bank or what accession identifiers is, is the data freely available? We want to know about the data splits, okay? Train and test data splits. Um, we want to know about redundancy between between data sets. Um, optimization. So we want to know more about the algorithm. You know, what, what is the machine well, machine learning algorithm that is used? We want to know about meta predictions. Does the model use data from other machine learning algorithms as input? And we want to know about data encoding. So how are the data encoded and pre-processed for the machine learning algorithm? And of course, for the model itself, um, interpretable, 
interpretability. So is the model black box or interpretable? Um, output, are, are we talking here, is the model classification or regression? Um, software, is, is the source code available? And evaluation. So especially to do with the, the, the method, for example, is it cross-validation? Is it independent data set? Are these novel experiments? Um, we want to know about confidence intervals. We want to know about performance metrics. So what we're asking for is to find out all this information, front load the effort and find out all this prior to peer review. So to take a step back, now look at the, the role of GigaScience in this. So, so GigaScience, big data journal, and we have a, a database curation team. And the role of the GigaScience database or GigaDB data curation team is to ensure the data submission process runs as smoothly as possible. So during pre-review, this means ensuring that code and supporting data are available to ensure reproducibility. The data curators additionally ensure expedient public release of data after review, okay, associated with the GigaScience or Gigabyte manuscript. And so the data curators are, are if you like, the front line that liaise with authors. Um, are, are there is, is sometimes seen as to police, but really we're there to advise on the appropriate data standards to use for what could be quite complex data sets. So I've mentioned already, but it could be genomic, neuroinformatics, um, digital imaging, um, digital pathology, micro CT imaging, and often including a machine learning component. And it's a big ask to, to ask our, our authors to be expert on all of these fields with some of these. So, so we're there to sort of advise on what is needed for publication. So the workflow that we've put together, this is in collaboration with GigaScience, uh, in collaboration with GigaScience Press and the DOM Consortium. So when authors submit a manuscript detailing, detailing supervised machine learning approaches, and th these manuscripts are read by the creation team, that's, that, that's really one important point. We read them, we notify them, and the, the authors, we request the inclusion of a DOM recommendation report. The submitting authors are then encouraged to log, log into what we call the DOM wizard, the DOM data stewardship wizard and complete a report. At this point, this report remains private, okay? It's, 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 it's just, um, it's not publicly available. So the DOME recommendation report is checked for completeness by the GigaDB curation team. And then it's sent out to review along with the code and supporting data. So for the review, that is sufficient up to that point. That's, what, that's what's needed for review. Uh, following peer review, the organization's admin can publish the annotation. And once the annotation becomes public, the owner resigns control of it. So subsequently, only the organization's admin retains control over the annotation. So in this case, the organization's admin it would be, for us, it's, a, it's the GigaDB curation team. It could be an editorial office. A unique identifier is then assigned to the annotation when it becomes public in the DOM registry. So to give you a schematic of, of, of what we have here, so the, the um, dome wizard, if you like, is what the, the author is invited um, to log into and to complete a form. There has to be a, an ORCID ID associated with it so that we've got a unique author identifier. Um, all this step, this is, this is what happens at, at pre-review, okay, and it's maintained private. After review, it can be submitted to the dome registry and made publicly available. So in terms of admin privileges, how this works, how this sort of partnership works, the users are of course the author, so they're working with, with, with the DOME wizard, um, the DOME consortium are the, the super admin rights and, and deal with the registry. And here in the middle is the, the organization admin. So so this is me, basically, this is me. In fact, I think you find it looks quite like me, you know? But back when I was in Men in Black, I think. But, um, so in summary, machine learning is increasingly applied to omics data, and there is a need for sufficient detail to enable a researcher to understand the machine learning approach used in a research study. Uh, to incentivize the generation of sufficiently detailed annotation, we've, we've partnered with the DOME Consortium with the goal of encouraging authors to follow the DOME recommendations, provide these DOME annotations, provide them early. We want them at pre-review stage. We find that they're a great asset to peer review process, providing the necessary high-level overview to properly understand the machine learning study. It also gives reviewers 
if, if they don't understand something, here, here's the point where they can come in and go, well, I need more detail here. Can you please tell me more? Um, and a link to the support and dome annotation is included in the support and GigaDB set and also the manuscript. So for future work, DOME is currently aimed to standardize metadata, for example, using Bioschema's mar markup, therefore paving the way for automatic review and assessment of compliance. So at the moment, it's, it's a form that you can fill in with free text, which is, which is sufficient for review and it's useful, but it'd be great to move towards controlled vocabularies. And, um, the GigaDB data curators, with their extensive experience in data standards across the biosciences, can liaise with authors and advise on appropriate machine learning standards that are recommended for various data set types. So one thing I'm sort of particularly interested in is maybe more voxel-based analysis that we're seeing that's coming through from digital pathology, that's coming through from neuroscience. Do we need to amend or, or work further on the, the, the DOME um, recommendations and, and make them more tailored for different communities? All this sort of part of future work. And just to acknowledge and say th uh, thank you to my colleagues in, in Giga Science Press and the uh, um, Don Consortium. Uh, Alex Monson is here as well and can answer some of the more technical questions relating to uh, the, the Dome Registry. And um, thank you for the invite. Thank you, Alex. It is on. Hi, Chris. Thank you for your talk. Um, as you were talking about your future work, and I was looking at the last uh, paragraph, it made me think, so you you feel Gigasizm will be empowered to share some machine learning standards that the authors can pursue. What about the data? Um, what about the readiness of the data for, for, for machine learning in, in AI? Uh, would you be thinking also and considering some guidelines for that? Yes. I mean... For us, at least at Giga Science, open data is, is a priority for us anyway. So we, we always try to make sure that the accession identifiers, that the input data is, is freely available. Um, the output data can be a challenge at times. It depends if it's if there's various um, restricted access. Even if it's sort of in that... Okay, an example would be human connectome project data which is open you can access but you, you have to provide details about yourself so the output data from that where, where, do, we, where do we archive that data kind of thing so there, there, there's challenges there for where the data is going to be archived but we can at least provide this sort of description of, of where the input data was sourced what, what the training test data splits were um, how, and, and um, how to go about getting data access from the appropriate Thank you. Repositories. Thank you. Um, one of the huge challenges in uh, machine learning studies is, uh, as I alluded to a little earlier, right, is data leakage. And so there, there, there are pretty obvious cases of data leakage uh, that can be easily uh, uh, detected from how somebody split up the data or didn't, right? But there are much more subtle ways data can leak when data are pulled together. There's data duplication or augmentation that doesn't really make the data different, right? Is this something you deal with in this? Not as such, no. Set I mean, of recommendations? Um, that's more a question for Alex, I would have thought. Do you... No, <laughs> no, not not at the moment. Um, at, at the moment, we we are working on a sort of basic form and, and just trying to get some idea over data splits and the like. Like but, but you see scenarios where they just say there's a machine learning component, and we, we actually just it's, it's it's not human readable. We're we're just trying to work out where we are. The more detailed questions, the more the more deeper analysis will probably come over time. But you you probably need tools to to rerun some of the analysis there. I would have thought. 